Hey, what'll it be, mister? The name's Bond. Ionic Bond. Taken, not shared. <laughs> And welcome to the lab where we take your questions and turn them into experiments every Sunday. My name is Mitch. And I'm Greg. And today we're going to be getting drunk in the name of science. So studies actually show that it's really hard when you're drinking to predict how drunk you actually are. So we're going to play with that a little bit. We're going to be doing something else. Oh yeah, we're actually also going to be seeing if we can trick a breathalyzer into thinking we're not drunk after we've already had quite a bit to drink. And, and then... we're going to test some scientific theories about whether or not you can sober up really quickly. So it, <laughs> we're essentially going to have like a really fast party. To start, we want to say that obviously we're here trying to talk about alcohol as a chemical that enters your body and is a point, a poison, something that can be very addictive. So we're not condoning alcohol, but we're trying to like, you know, scientifically look at what it does to our bodies as something that many people in our society do. And it's very, a really strong custom and part of our culture. On that note. Cheers. <laughs> so an interesting thing good. <laughs> about beer that relates to science is that Niels Bohr, who was a Danish scientist after receiving the Nobel Prize, Carlsberg, a very famous Famish. Fam Danish Whoa. famous. Danish famous <laughs> brewery actually opened a line of beer right directly to his house on tap so that Niels Bohr, after receiving his Nobel Prize, got to have beer whenever he wanted. <laughs> I think that more people would get Nobel Prizes if they knew that was like the reward. Mm. <sighs> so did you know that a butt is a medieval measurement? That's B-U-T-T -T, like my butt is a medieval measurement of 126 gallons of wine. Yeah, uh, did not know that. <laughs> oh, the oaky texture is just divine. It smells like a $4 wine, doesn't it? <clears throat> I'm done. Ooh. So next up, we have a Canadian delicacy known <laughs> as the Caesar. Mm. Tastes like zoodles. Ooh, it is like spicy. Tastes like zoodles. I'm feeling kind of tipsy. Are you feeling kind of <laughs> tipsy? Studies actually show that when you think that you're the most drunk, your actual peak drunkenness is 25 minutes after you actually think that it is. So I'm feeling huh. very drunk right now, and so I'm worried about myself in 25 like minutes. Like where you'll be. Over here we've got sober, feeling good. This is, you know, where you can and can't drive. And so we are gonna take our little action pieces <laughs> and decide. And estimate where we are. Here, 0 0.09, because I think I couldn't drive. I think if a cop stopped me right now, I'd be like, I'm sorry, here's my jail time. I think I'll put mine a little lower, like probably right on 0 0.08. 0 0.02. Mitch uh, so I actually was overestimating you're... how, that's how careful I am. 0 0.03. Okay, so I'm at, I'm, I'm at the feeling good section. Yeah, we're both you feel like, good. I feel good. I do feel good. That's true. But that, I mean, I probably I feel, feel like if I was too. like the government of Canada, I'd be like lower that to like 0 0.03. According to science, drinking diet drinks with your alcohol will get you drunk faster. And it does make sense and it is true because what happens is the sugar acts as a meal so it holds the alcohol in your stomach for longer and your stomach actually absorbs alcohol much slower than your small intestine. So when you drink Diet Cokes, the alcohol makes its way to your small intestine faster, therefore it is <laughs> absorbed more. So if you really, for whatever reason, want to get drunk very fast, you do use Diet Cola. Okay, so. This is too much to go on the intro. Okay, like, no. I'm so ashamed. What's the, <laughs> wait. Everyone keeps talking about the internet. What's the internet? <laughs> I like, don't know what it is. And everyone's like, oh, what's it like to have a job on the internet? I'm like, what? <laughs> Did you know that the British Navy actually found that rum would stop their scurvy when they're at sea? Did you know that? Do you believe that? No. It was an interesting finding until they realized it was actually the lime that they were putting in their rum that was helping to uh, fight off the scurvy, but they, for the longest time, thought that the rum itself had some magical ingredients. Oh, the British. Oh, that alcohol will save, eh? <laughs> I ain't stop rum at night. It's good. This is, this is one of my favorite drinks. Yeah, rum and coke. Rum and coke. Mm -hmm. This is Mitch's poison. Oh! Oh! <laughs> we're gonna do some vodka and coke, also known as a Vogue. Oh, Ooh, that's university. One weird thing about vodka is that it actually goes bad and you're not supposed to keep it for more than 12 months. Really? Yeah. Why do we feel this way? So we're obviously intoxicated at this point. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is alcohol doing to us? Actually, alcohol is slowing down our the, our brain and our neurons responses. Two different types of neurons. Some are excitatory and some are... Inhibitory. Inhibitory. And so alcohol actually slows down the excitatory neurons and stimulates the inhibitory neurons. Now normally those inhibitory neurons help to 
guide your thoughts so that your brain isn't just being stimulated crazily. But alcohol actually stimulates those more, so you shut down a lot of the process in your brain. You stop paying attention to those external sources or noises around you that your brain is really good at picking up. You think a lot about nothing. Picture this. Shun Shun Magic School Bus. Shun Shun <laughs> coming to Netflix. And then like a weird like live action lizard running up Julianne Moore's arm and it's like, like hey. get in the bus. <laughs> ding ding. And it's like 2017. I would be like, <gasps> have to pee pretty bad. Are you at that point? I can explain this. So in our kidneys, um, it's really important that you have your antidiuretic hormone, which reabsorbs water back into your body because you don't want to just like get rid of water because water is like what makes you live. Mm -hmm. And so alcohol binds to that antidiuretic hormone. And so it, when it binds to it, therefore you don't reabsorb water back into your body and you just piss it all out. That's why when you go out to bars and you drink lots of beer, you just pee all the time and therefore you become dehydrated and therefore you become hungover and therefore you have to pee right now because alcohol is binding to your antidiuretic hormone and that's why you have to pee. Also, the most important thing in the world is science. Girl, I'm gonna whip out some diet! Straight uh, to the brain! <laughs> straight to the small intestine. True. So are you These near are blurred vision and speech, or are you close to sad? I think that I'm probably at 0 0.10, and I have zero idea what's going on. Your turn. I think I'm probably more like one point. You're drunker than me! We should pose it like our baby. Like. Yeah. Are she blues? <gasps> zero point zero eight. If any cop were to pull me over right now and be like, "You can go, sir," I'd be like, "No, no, 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 no! <laughs> You're protecting the people. Do not let me go. Lower it, Canada." I'm 0 0.8 as well. <laughs> Consider that in most places, 0 0.05 is the limit, and so yeah. we're actually over it. You you can't really predict. We've been so bad at not only predicting it, but... I kind of thought that maybe we'd be like, oh, we're always feeling good, but we're way I more thought, drunk. Yeah, I, I honestly thought I didn't think thought we were gonna be, be like more drunk and then actually be down here. So one myth I've come across on the internet is that peanut butter can actually stop or hide the fact that you're drunk. And another theory is that if you suck on a penny, you can actually do a breathalyzer test and the results will be a lot lower than you think that they are. Allegedly, the sodium in the peanut butter binds to the ethanol and the alcohol and somehow stops the breathalyzer from picking it up. I think that the science isn't really in on the penny, it's just people think that if you suck on it's a penny, you won't. Mmm, I love peanut butter. Ew. I can't believe I'm doing this. How's the penny? I'm sucking on the queen right now. This is so gross. <laughs> I went down 0.1. Oh, wow. It went down. It went down. So mine may have gone down a little bit, but it's still above the legal limit. This did not make any drastic change yeah. to what I, I was doing. I think a 0 0.01 change is negligible enough that it doesn't necessarily. It mean was definitely not worth sucking on the a device. penny. Yeah, no, yeah. And I'm still would be if I was pulled over, I would still be in trouble. Have over, a DUI. over the limit. Okay, so scientists have shown that potentially honey could be the cure for your drunkenness. And what they did is they actually got mice intoxicated and found that when they gave certain mice honey and certain ones not, the ones that got honey were actually able to perform these specific climbing tasks better and were actually able to have their dexterity be like heightened. And so essentially they were like, okay, honey maybe has sobered up these mice, but they don't know exactly why. So we are going to be the first human subjects who clearly right now are drunk, this is not okay though, because like mine's gone down by zero. It's like so, so intensely full of like glucose and sugar that like I actually think my body's like poof. That like maybe these mice were just like shocked. <laughs> I don't think this is a reasonable way to sober up because you just feel sick. In the study, the scientists argue that it increases autonomic activity, kind of as if what we were just saying, it's like when a cop shows up at a party and all of a sudden you think, I know exactly what to do. I'm only point zero one down below where I was before and I feel like that would be a natural so, progression from the way. No. So mine stayed the same. In this case it did not work. In the meantime it's time for This, this week, week in Science, Science Talk. Talk. So this week we're hungover. 
A one-year-old girl with leukemia has received modified immune cells from a healthy donor, which has put her cancer into remission. This type of therapy has actually already been done on an HIV patient in the past where they took healthy T cells from another subject and put them inside of him. This gene editing technology could be a glimpse into the future of medical care. Soon, scientists will be intimately studying how 10,000 New Yorkers live their lives, where they go, what they eat, how they grow, etc. This will help to gain new biomedical and sociological information to help inspire new groundbreaking studies. This data will inspire you! Swedish scientists have discovered that high-intensity interval training, or working out really hard for short periods of time, offers the same endurance benefits as longer, more time-consuming exercises that are less intense. This really intense training creates free radicals which break down calcium levels, ultimately increasing the power of muscle cells. And less gym time means more Zelda time. Thanks again for watching another episode of The Lab. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter with our handles right here. We're gonna go drink a bunch of water and sleep, so subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next week. Peace.